today? Good, how are you? Good, good. How are you enjoying Comic-Con? I know y'all been plenty of times. It's, I'll tell you, this year, we just got here last night, so um, it's not as hot as usual, thank flipping God. Um, it's, it seems like the streets are livelier, but the halls are, are quieter, so it's really interesting. I'm used to, you know, like, I'm usually with the big, like, nine CW shows, and so there's, like, Riverdale people and Vampire Diaries people crossing paths, and, you know, in the hallway A or whatever, and this is nice and kind of calm, but still everybody's really engaged and really excited to be here. Yeah. Um, my first question is, how different or similar has it been adapting another vampire book into a series? This is actually uh, a, been a very different process because when when we started with Vampire Diaries, Kevin and I read the first book. Um, we may not have actually finished the first book. I can't be sure. Um, but we, you know, instantly saw sort of the Twilight comparisons, even though those books had been written earlier. And so then we had to spend a lot of our time kind of working away from the Twilight comparisons because we were following Twilight and didn't want to be compared to Twilight. So we took a lot of liberties, a lot of liberties, and then decided early on not to take a look at the other books in the series. Um, whereas this, I read all six books back when they were published, reread all six books when we decided to make the show, and remembered in rereading the six books how much I loved them the first time around and how good they were. And so then it's just like you take six books in a series, you put up everything you love about it on the wall, and then it's about building the puzzle of you know, the true adaptation of how can we both be loyal and true to what we love about this series as fans, but also be storytellers that are building a series that has to go on for many years that might have things outside of the books that still feel all organic and to that. And that feels really relevant now, and cause it, because they came out a while ago, so sort of the why now of it is always super important, and when we reread them, it's, you know, everything that we saw was about this class system that wasn't working. It's, there, there's this, this system that is not working that these women are up against it these two best friends from different classes that the system is challenging them and it's not working so what do they do about it so we were like that is what everybody's thinking about right now but you get to do it in this way in metaphor with vampires and castles and all the things so it's it's kind of a beautiful way to, to tell the tale now in a relevant way um so how happy do you think that die-hard fans of the book are going to be with the treatment of the source material and what's going to be on the screen? You know, it's a good question because I don't want to speak for them. Um, we have spent this whole last two days talking about how much, how important their love for the books is to us and how important our love of the books is to the show. Um, that being said, there is a lot of stuff that we made up out of our own heads. Um, always in the spirit of what Rochelle did in the books always but you know it's a eight, 15 years later we you know wanted to make sure there was queer representation in the show we wanted to make sure there was all kinds of inclusivity in the show that we really did attack the class uh, the class bias and the elitism and like with a much heavier hand than perhaps she did in the books um, and we also had a lot of fun in the decisions we did make to for example tell the first episode in a different order than the first book. Um, with that came losing certain things, punting them down into future seasons, or you know, bringing things from book six or five up into the first season. So I guess if someone's looking for a faithful adaptation, you know, filled with all this, everything that they had in the books, they're not gonna get that. But I think that they'll see that everything that's in there is within the love and spirit of the books themselves. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think yeah. it does. I think we lo we love the characters. I mean, why I love the books. So again, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody. These characters are so compelling, and I love them. Like I love Rose Hathaway. I love Lisa Dragmar. I love these. So that love comes through, and I think the, the spirit of who those people are and how they behave with each other is really there. So is the romance that you got in the books. Like nobody so was like, the maybe Rose and Dimitri shouldn't get together. Yeah, there's know. none like, of there's that. There's none of that. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no, like as you say, canon. Some stuff is yeah, canon. canon. So we're yeah. very, very true to that. But I also think, I mean, I love adaptations. I love to see, you know, all the Jane Austen adaptations. There's like 20 of every single one. And I love to see all the different ways in that people go. So if you're somebody who, who loves the characters and is a little open to saying, here's this world we set it in, and there's all this truth and all this affection for the source material, because she did a brilliant job, Rochelle Mead. Um, 
I think they'll come along. I think we'll win them over. They'll come along yeah. for the ride. It might be at first a little like, hmm, <laughs> like, grr, and then, grr. Grr. Oh, and then, oh, you know, <laughs> I, I could see that being the journey. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's a it's a grab bag of things. One, like personally, I'm really excited to show off Rose and Lissa because we worked really hard on their friendship and we worked really hard on casting and we worked really hard on chemistry and making sure that we were being true to that relationship. Um, and so uh, we really think we did it <laughs> and are excited about it. I, of course, am excited for people to meet Dimitri. I'm terrified for people to meet Dimitri because he, Dimitri is not the swashbuckling, you know, long-haired, um, you know, sexy I'm not Russian. I'm not but, I mean... He's great. If you're not going to find a sexy Russian, then you got the next best thing. <laughs> I think we did. I think we did okay there. Yeah, I think we did just fine. Also, this, just the setting, like it is yeah. magnificently beautiful. We have great artisans working on everything. Just when you see the costumes, when you see the setting, when you see the quality of the production, I feel very proud of that. I feel like it's it's visually sumptuous and it's really set in its own unique world. It's like a world we haven't seen before. So we, we talk about it being both set in the ancient and modern world. It's this separate society that's kind of come up. To and I just, I just feel like it's unique, and so I'm, yeah. I'm excited for people to see that. And I'm, I can't wait to hear yeah. people's feedback. I'm, I'm really excited. Like I always wondered what the royal court would look like when yeah. I read the books, right? Yeah, exactly. And um, and in my head, I'm like, well, there'd be a castle, obviously, and then there'd be like streets, and probably they'd be cobblestone because you know it's royal court. And would there be like dress shops? Would there be boutique? Like, what would it look what like? It and then we we get to this Olite, this town that has a castle on it. And cobblestone streets leading away from the Which castle with shops. little shops, and I'm like, is that? Ah, you know, we found the, we don't even have to create the royal court with visual effects. We like found it all in the location. same location, and it's so exciting. And you know, we made our own currency. Um, we made we, we decided that the money should be called mirrors instead of dollars, like Vladimir mirrors. Haha. Uh -huh. um, so we have money that's unique to the show. We have a, a language, language that's unique to the show. The old Moroi is in all their like religious scripture that we have the guy that created the Dothraki, Dothraki language from Game of Thrones, created our old Moroi language. So you could actually like translate your name uh, into old Moroi lettering, which I think maybe one day will be a social media app. Um, we just have fun with all that stuff. And so I'm really excited to show it off. So kind of expanding on what you were talking about, um, are you going to expand the lore of the book or like continue and make your own lore in the series? I think we're not gonna we're not gonna restrict ourselves from taking a right or a left turn that is outside of the books. Mm -hmm. But we are always going to be keeping the books in consideration before we do those things. Can this fold into a story that was in the books that we can, even though we want to tell this kind of story, maybe we marry those two ideas together and we stay closer to what's on the, on the page. Or maybe we, maybe we go far left, like we've talked about wanting to go to the compounds. Um, the communes. Uh, sorry, the communes. No, the compound is my <laughs> retirement fantasy. <laughs> We've talked about going to the communes, you know, to and, where we um, actually see all of that. Yeah, and it's all that, but that's still still yeah. really rooted in the lore. Like that's what's great about the books. There's yeah. so much in the books, so much in the stories that are there that it's, it's it may be a left turn in terms of something you yeah. haven't seen in the books, but it really does spring from that, from that, from those books, from those, from that canon. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so no you know, change for like previous supernatural shows, but a lot of them are pretty wide and not as diverse, and I'm not even the casting for this, and it is, it's pretty diverse, it's wonderful, and I wanted to know the importance of casting diversity for you. Oh, well, I mean, my God, talk about somebody who really had a hard lesson to learn early on, you know, I think I come from a, tele a generation of television showrunners who sort of followed the, the rule of colorblind casting and make sure there's, you know, a couple people that aren't white and then everyone goes on with their lives, you know, and um, and that ultimately was a real mistake then and, and, and it had a, a negative impact on storytelling itself because then not prioritizing it on the screen then meant you weren't prioritizing it in your writer's room and you weren't prioritizing it on your crew and you basically just had a bunch of white people making TV shows about white people, um, myself included. So a representation has been my biggest priority pretty much since I woke up to realize that I had been doing it all wrong. Um, and this show is sort of like the peak of that, because, or the, or the, the, the top of that hill thus far, because 
what we had to do on this show is not only did we say, look, you know, this show needs to not be just filled with a bunch of white Americans. This show needs to feel global. This show needs to represent a lot of different faces and a lot of different cultures. But also, then we had to really debate, like, should Rose be black? Because Rose is in a submissive position. She's in essentially indentured servitude. And if Rose is black, then are we accidentally saying something we didn't mean to say? And we debated this for hours in our writer's room, which thankfully was filled with wonderful black people. And even they would say, one of them would say, I don't think so. I don't think she should be, because I do think it's a wrong message. And somebody else would say, I want my daughter to be able to see this heroine on screen who looks like her. And I don't care about anything else. And I would consult people outside of the show and ask the question, uh, people who deal with this kind of question a lot. And the ultimate answer is, it was for us is, C.C. Stringer is Rose. She's wonderful. Period, end of story. She's clearly the best person for this, for this role. So now what do we do to make sure that we don't put C.C. into a Bonnie Bennett situation? And that came with making sure that the dumpier novices were not all comprised of people of color, that casting that the rich royals were also people of color, so it didn't feel like white savior. I mean, we, we went down all the roads and we were so careful. Um, and it still probably screwed some things up, but we really did, we were so thoughtful about it. And it was that important to us to make sure that we learned from, we, me, I learned from past mistakes, but we as a group, um, we're trying to do the right thing in this show to really paint a picture of what the world looks and like. And then, here's the thing, it's yeah. the upside of it is what is so patently obvious, is you end up getting a better show, a better yeah. cast, a better story, a b story yeah. told in a better way, and that's what was the greatest thing, is this cast is extraordinary, and we had the luxury of casting around the world, we had the luxury, and, and like everything that you said held true, like let's be really, but it was always the best yeah. person came in you're like that is this character that is undeniably that character and it, and so the, the combination of things actually made it just made it all better and when we when we finished casting and then took a look at our ensemble having chosen who we wanted for every part we realized there are three white people in this ensemble of ten and incidentally two of them are queer so you know it works it works in all the ways it's supposed to when you open your mind up to everything and you make it a priority you find yourself casting the best people and and, and it, it really you know and, and then you have a, a poster that reflects the world in the right way thank you so much yeah thank you Thanks for asking. Yeah. It is the most important. And like, lesson learned no, no, no. the I'm hard way. No, 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 writer's room, I'm here for yeah. it. Like, I love this. I love this. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.